Hi, my name is Donna. I'm an orthopedic certified registered nurse. This video provides information to help prepare your home, yourself, and your caregiver for your upcoming total joint surgery. The information is meant to be a supplement for your guidebook and the total joint class that you and your caregiver have already attended. So let's get started. Pre-surgery visit should happen two to four weeks prior to your date of surgery and is a time for you and your caregiver to sit down with your surgeon or physician assistant and discuss the details regarding your surgery. This is also a great time to bring your walker to have it sized for you so it's ready to go if you haven't already brought it to the class. In your book, you'll find a complete pre-surgery checklist. There's a lot of items on this list so it's important to go ahead and get started now. At the top of the list, you'll see that you'll need a dental checkup prior to your surgery. We want that at least two weeks prior to your surgery, or if you have to wait, three months afterwards. But it is very important that you go into total joint surgery with good oral health. We also want you to get your physical therapy appointments scheduled. You can call the physical therapy office and they can assist you in knowing when to start and how often you're going to need to come according to your surgeon's suggestions. Go ahead and do your exercises. You'll find some in the book that will help you maintain your range of motion and mobility prior to surgery. Now this isn't a time that we want you to do your exercises to the point that you're hurting or causing more inflammation. We know that that knee or that hip are very sore right now. That's why you're having this surgery. We just wanna help you maintain what you already have. It's important that your doctor and your nurse know what types of medications, vitamins and supplements and over-the-counter medicines you might be taking. So go ahead and start making a list of everything that you take so that you can discuss this with your surgeon or with your nurse. If you're going to need disability or FMLA paperwork, this is a good time to get that filled out as well. If you need assistance with that, you can speak to the person at the concierge desk located at the Longmont office. In your book, you'll find a complete home preparedness checklist. I'm just gonna hit a couple of the highlights on there. You wanna make sure that your home is safe and ready for your return from surgery. Remove any tripping hazards. That would be like rugs that are laying around. You don't wanna trip over those with your walker. You also wanna think about your pets. How are they going to handle you coming home from surgery? Are they able to just be in a room while you come in and get situated? Or do they need to stay with a friend for a few days? You wanna clear pathways in your home so that you can negotiate your hallways into your bathroom, your bedroom, and over to the table for meals with your walker. Now is the time to move things out of those hallways so that you have enough room. When you're in the bathroom, go ahead and try out whether you're able to sit down on your toilet and get up using only one leg. It's not that you won't be able to use your knee or your hip after surgery, but they do get sore and sometimes they get tired by the end of the day and you might need some assistance getting up. So now's the time to figure out, do I need to put in a grab bar? Do I need to put in a toilet riser? What's gonna make it easiest for me to recover at home? You've probably been given a prescription by your surgeon or your physician assistant. Go ahead and fill those so that they're ready to go for surgery. And while you're there, pick up 81 milligram aspirin. It's also called baby aspirin or heart healthy aspirin. You'll want a stool softener or a laxative because the pain medications can be very constipating. You'll also want to pick up some Tylenol. 500 milligram tablets work well. Hey, what else do you need to have in your home prior to surgery? Well, food, that's an important one. You want to have nutritious meals and snacks available for you at home. Think of those things that you're willing to eat at three in the morning or three in the afternoon because we're going to ask you to have some type of small meal or snack every time before you have any medications. Go ahead and prepare those so that they're ready to go and easy for you to consume. Okay, countdown to surgery. You've got your home ready, you've got your caregiver set up, you have five days to go prior to surgery. What should you be doing? Well, what we do not want you to do is we don't want you to shave that leg for at least five days prior to surgery. Don't shave anywhere around that operative site for five days prior to your surgery. We also want you to stop any vitamins, herbal supplements, or anti-inflammatory medications that you might be taking. Ensure that you've completed your home checklist and that you have your adaptive equipment ready to go.
Okay, so it's the day before your surgery. You've probably got some butterflies in your stomach. I'm gonna give you a list of things to keep you busy. First, I want you to shower with Hippoclins. Um, you should have received a bottle similar to this at your class that you attended. You wanna shower from your neck to your toes with the Hippoclins, focusing it on your surgical area, whether it be your knee or your hip. Really gently lather and massage that area with the Hippoclins for five minutes before rinsing it off. We don't want you to scrub the skin or um, scratch it in any ways, we want that skin intact. So just a nice gentle lather for five minutes. Today is a good day to concentrate on good nutrition and hydration as well. We want you eating healthy foods. We want you drinking water throughout the day. Carry a cup of water with you wherever you go. You're gonna feel much better tomorrow if your nutrition and hydration is good today. Pack your bag. You wanna bring your walker. Now I know it won't fit in the bag. You're not Mary Poppins. Maybe put it next to the bag. Inside your bag, you wanna put your medications, any medications that you're already taking at home that you might need at the surgery center, as well as the pain medicine um, that was prescribed by your doctor. If you're using a CPAP or a BiPAP, you also wanna have that ready to come to the surgery center. If you have special dietary needs, we want you to pack snacks that you are able to eat. Um, think of things that you are willing to eat when you're not feeling 100%. If you have a cold therapy unit at home that you're bringing for your knee, you wanna pack that as well. And then any cases for eyeglasses, hearing aids, dentures, go ahead and bring those along so that we can keep your valuables safe. So you've made it through the day before surgery and you're working into those evening hours. You can go ahead and eat all the way up until midnight. In fact, it's not a bad idea to have a snack really late in the evening. But once midnight comes, do not place anything in your mouth except for water or Gatorade. And you can continue to drink those until four hours before your arrival time. Good morning. It's the day of your surgery today. So what should we be doing? I want you to jump in the shower. Take a shower with your Hiba cleanse again. Remember to go ahead and lather from the neck all the way down to the toes. Focus on either your hip or your knee, whichever joint is being replaced. Lather up that area for a good five minutes. Remember, be gentle with your skin. We don't want you to scrub or irritate the skin. Just a nice gentle lather. We don't want you to apply any lotions or colognes afterwards, no makeup. And we wanna make sure that you remove any metal that's on your body, jewelry, watches, piercings, if you think that a piercing is gonna be a problem to get out or a ring is gonna be hard to get off, go ahead and visit your jeweler. They can help you with that. Sometimes they can even put in a plastic post to maintain your piercing. We want you to dress in comfortable clothes. Um, after your surgery, you'll either have a bulky bandage on your hip or your knee. So if you're having hip surgery, think about wearing pants that are very loose fitting around your hips. Or if you're having a knee surgery, either shorts or something with a wide leg to it that's easy to put on and off. Also pay attention to the footwear that you decide to bring. You want something that has a non-skid sole to it and fits firmly around your foot. No flip-flops or sandals. So you're ready to head over to the surgery center now. Make sure that your bag is in the car ready to go and don't forget your caregiver. Okay, so you've arrived at the surgery center. Go ahead and enter through the front doors and turn to your right. You'll see the surgery center right there. Check in at the desk. They'll let the preoperative nurse know that you're ready. While you're in the preoperative area, you're going to meet with your surgeon again. You'll meet your anesthesiologist and your operating room team. Feel free to ask them any questions that you may have. Once your questions are completely answered, you'll be ready to go back into the operating room. During this time, they'll ask your family member to wait for you in the waiting room. Surgery usually takes anywhere between an hour and a half and two hours. Once your surgery is completed, you're gonna go into the surgery recovery area. This is also a lot of times referred to as the PACU or post-anesthesia care unit. You usually stay in this area of the surgery center for about three to five hours. When you wake up, there might be a couple of sensations you notice right away. A lot of people think <laughs> there's a cat in the bed. I guarantee you there are no cats at the surgery center. This is a compression device that's used to give a gentle massage to your calves to help with your circulation and to prevent blood clots from forming. 
ice will also be applied to your surgical area prior to you waking up. So you might feel like that knee or that hip are pretty cold. That's completely normal. As you're more awake and talking and feeling more like yourself again, you will be offered solid food and something to drink. Once you've had that solid food, something to drink, you're a little awake, a physical therapist is going to come in and work with you. And you will have a physical therapy session prior to going home. You are ready to go home when your vital signs are stable, your blood pressure is back to normal, your heart rate is stable, your pain is controlled, you've had your first session of physical therapy completed, and you've urinated. Managing your pain is going to be important after surgery. I would be lying to you if I said there was no pain associated with surgery. We're able to manage the pain, but we can never fully take away that pain in those days following surgery. We want you to keep your pain well controlled so that you're able to do the things that your surgeon asks you to do. Having so much pain that you can't complete your physical therapy exercises leads to complications after surgery, including scar tissue forming. People are going to ask you while you're in the surgery center and even after surgery, what number is your pain? Well, numbers and pain, how do the two relate? Somebody came up with a scale from zero being absolutely no pain at all to 10 being the worst pain you can ever imagine. Go ahead and look in your book. There's a chart in there that explains the scale so that you can tell your surgeon or your nurse where your pain level is at. While taking pain medication, we don't want you to make any important decisions, no driving, and no operating machinery or appliances. Also, while on pain medicine, do not consume any alcohol or any marijuana products. After surgery, a nurse is going to sit down with your caregiver and go through a specialized list of instructions. Everything is in writing so that when you get home and you're feeling better, you can actually read those instructions for yourself. Make sure that you're very familiar with their, those instructions. There's a lot to remember. You'll notice in one part of the instructions that'll talk about swelling and discoloration. There's some pictures in your book. When you have a total joint replaced, there is swelling, there is discoloration, that is normal. Um, don't be alarmed, but by all means, if you're feeling concerned, go ahead and give us a call. There's instructions in there for how to um, protect your incision. There's instructions for icing, for how to manage your pain. There's a reminder to take aspirin. There's also instructions regarding your diet, constipation, and diarrhea. Go ahead and read through all of those. Okay, we're gonna talk about some infection prevention. Now I know when you get home, you're feeling better, you're able to um, take off that ice for the first time. Everybody wants to lift that bandage and peek and see what does my incision look like? How many staples or sutures are in there? How long is it? I just want to see it. I want to show it to my friends. I'm telling you, do not remove that bandage unless you are instructed to by your surgeon. If you are instructed to, you want to make sure that you wash your hands before doing that. You want to keep any pets away from the area. Um, you just want to really protect that surgical site against infection because infection is not a complication you want to have after surgery. Also think about your own health. I know people will want to come visit you. They'll want to see you. Make sure that they're healthy. A phone call goes a long ways from a sick friend. You don't want them visiting you while they're sick. Okay, so what are some of the common complaints that we hear after total joint surgery? Well, swelling is a big one. You are going to have some swelling after surgery. It's something that we expect, but if it's to a point that it's concerning to you, go ahead and give the office a call and they can talk to you about it. Nausea. A lot of people feel nauseous after surgery. We do our best to try to treat that. There's different medications that we can give you. But one of the things that you can do to protect yourself from nausea is make sure that you're eating prior to taking any medications. Get up and get moving and make sure that you keep constipation away because anytime you're feeling constipated, you're also going to start to feel nauseous. We've spoken a lot about constipation and there are some books 
there is um, some material in your book that covers that as well. But like I said, that's probably our number one complaint. Loss of appetite. That can also happen after surgery and that's okay. If you have to only eat small meals here and there with your pills, go ahead and do that. Emotional ups and downs. Well, we also hear a lot about that, especially around day five to day seven. You know, the first, second, third day, people are rock stars. You feel like you could take on the world. The pain isn't that bad. You're moving around. Your knee or your hip is moving great and you feel like you could do anything. And then on day five, you're saying, I don't know why I did this. I don't wanna get out of bed. I don't wanna do my exercises. I don't feel good. I feel sick. That's normal. It's normal to have up days and down days throughout your recovery. So when does a concern rise to the level of needing to contact a doctor? Well, it's important to remember that we do have a doctor on call 24 seven. So if you're experiencing chills or fever greater than 101.5, go ahead and call your surgeon. If you have new numbness or weakness, or you have vomiting or worsening abdominal pain, give them a call. If you have redness or swelling in your calf, especially red streaks or extreme swelling, give the surgeon a call. And if your dressing becomes saturated, give the surgeon a call. Please call your surgeon prior to going to the emergency room. Now, if you're having chest pain or shortness of breath, by all means, call 911 and go to the nearest emergency facility. the pain management program in knee replacement includes a procedure called an adductor canal block or an ACB. This is in addition to general anesthesia. The ACB is a procedure done in the preoperative area by your anesthesiologist. It includes doing an injection through the front of your thigh along the nerve that decreases sensation in your leg and minimizes pain for anywhere from 12 to 36 hours, usually right around 24. This procedure happens in the preoperative area and your caregiver is more than welcome to stay with you. We do give you some medication that helps you relax. You're pretty forgetful. You don't really care much about this procedure. Some people don't remember it at all. After your knee replacement surgery, you are gonna have some precautions to follow. Make sure you read your surgeon's instructions carefully. No pillow under that knee. We do want the leg elevated, but do not place a pillow directly behind your kneecap. Put it underneath your calf. No twisting or pivoting on your knee. Make sure you're doing your physical therapy exercises and using your ice as needed. Hi, I'm Jason, DPT of Physical Therapy, and I'm here to talk to you about what's gonna happen after your total joint surgery. First, I'm gonna talk about adaptive equipment, using a walker when walking and getting in and out of a chair. And then we're gonna talk about how to go up and down steps safely. When walking with the walker, make sure you stay close to the walker and do not get too far away from it. When sitting in a chair, make sure you reach back with each arm, grab each arm of the chair, and lower yourself down with your arms and kick out your leg. So when you get up from a chair, make sure you do not reach forward and grab the walker. You need to push up from each arm of the chair, use your arms, and raise yourself up, then grab your walker. you do go up and down the steps at home, make sure someone's around just in case something happens. When you go up the steps, I want you to step up with the good leg, and when you come down the steps, I want you to go down with the bad leg. After your surgery, a PT will be called to help you get out of bed. Once you're out of bed, you will walk with a walker to the restroom. Once you have successfully used the restroom, you'll be put in a wheelchair and taken to the PT gym where we will ensure that you are able to go home safely. On the day of surgery, for both knee and hip patients, you should do 10 ankle pumps every 30 to 60 minutes while awake. Be sure to focus on resting and recovery. Knee patients will need to start doing some of the exercises outlined in your guidebook the day after surgery. For the first couple of days, walk with your walker inside and start your range of motion exercises, specifically the supine heel slide and heel prop. You will have a second PT appointment within a couple of days of surgery where we will personalize your rehabilitation exercises.
thank you for choosing us for your surgery. As part of your joint replacement team, we're here to help you navigate this journey and get you back to the activities you enjoy. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to give any one of your team members a call.